question. Okay. Um, so today we're joined by Taylor Spear. Taylor is a social media expert and a content creator who's enthusiastic about social media marketing, brand communications, public relations, and consumer psychology. She has experience in fashion, hospitality, and entertainment, and will be giving us a deep cut into designing engaging content for social media. Go ahead whenever you're ready, Taylor. Thanks, Leah. Okay. Just share my screen. Hi, everyone. Okay. Can everyone see my screen okay? Okay. Okay. So um, as Sriya kind of introed, I'm here to talk to you today about Canva for your startup uh, and some other free social tools uh, that you can use to design really engaging graphics uh, for, for social media that, that'll really capture the attention of the user um, and, and, and will engage your user base across social platforms. So for those of you who, who don't know me, I'm Taylor. Uh, I'm currently a social media account manager at a digital marketing agency called InView Digital. Uh, and in this role, I really extensively work on social media strategy, paid and organic social campaigns for a variety of different clients across industries, mostly in fashion, beauty, and hospitality. But I have experience kind of all across the board with different clients. Um, and so I'm, I'm really hands-on with social campaigns on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's kind of the focus are going to be the focus of my presentation here. Um, you know, how to design graphics using tools that are totally free for you, for you to download and adopt. Um, how do you design really catchy graphics for social media? So a little bit about my background. Uh, I went to, I'm a Buffalonian at heart. Uh, I went to Canisius College for my undergrad where I got my bachelor's in marketing. I then went on to the University of Buffalo where I got my MBA. I worked for a brief time at New Era and Brand Communications and PR. Uh, and then I actually worked at Blackstone Launchpad at the University at Buffalo. Uh, during my time as an MBA student, I was a graduate assistant there. So I was essentially tasked with managing all their social content and building their social channels from the ground up. And that was kind of the catalyst for what brought me to my current role at Indu Digital, um, managing social media accounts and strategy. So, a little bit of my history. Um, I'm currently based in Manhattan, but uh, again, I'm, I'm from Buffalo. So, and I've worked with the Buffalo startup team. So I'm kind of familiar with, with the startup ecosystem and, and the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Buffalo. Um, one thing that I, that I really like to say about design is it's not so much about the tools that you use, but rather how you use them. So, you know, you think in terms of design, you think you have to be a Photoshop expert or you have to have all these advanced tools or you have to be a video, video editing pro, uh, but that's really not the case. There are a ton of free tools that are available to you as young entrepreneurs, as, as startup owners and founders uh, that you can use to make some really eye-catching and really catchy graphics uh, without having to pay for or learn expensive software. So I'm gonna kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of those tools today and hopefully you'll extract some value out of what I'm walking you through. Uh, a lot of these tools I use on a daily basis as well as a social media manager. So um, I'm uniquely familiar with a lot of the tools and, and processes and how to use them. And I hope that um, you'll find these tools useful as well and, and use them to create more engaging social content. So today's agenda, I just want to walk you through some content rules of engagement, some do's and don'ts, tips and tricks for social media, creating graphics for social. Then I'll walk you through Canva, which is our bread and butter tool, which is going to be the main focus of the presentation today. Uh, just talk you through some tips and tricks for using Canva, which is a completely free tool for you to, for you to use. It's a really easy graphics platform. Um, I'll walk you through some examples of work in action, some, some things that I've designed in Canva for real life clients and implemented on social. Um, and then I'll walk you through some supplemental tools that 
are also free. Uh, and most of them mobile apps, things that you can download to your phone and then use to create graphics and design different graphics for social. So first of all, just some content rules of engagement. Uh, the one thing that I always like to mention when it comes to social media is being cognizant of text. So the algorithm on most social platforms will demote images that have too much text. So you want to be careful about how much text you're using in your designs. Um, Facebook previously had a 20% text rule, which essentially said, you know, text can't take up more than 20% of the surface area of your image. They've since eliminated that rule, so it's a little less restrictive, but they'll still demote images that are too text heavy. So when it comes to text, less is more. Um, and, and less smaller text or text that takes up less surface area is better. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be word count. We're not thinking here in terms of number of sentences or characters. We're thinking about the proportion of text to blank space in the image. So over here on the right, you see it has quite a few words, but there's still a lot of blank space around the word, so it's not visually overwhelming. Uh, that's what we're trying to avoid, anything that's visually overwhelming or anything that, that's going to fatigue the user when they scroll. So something to keep in mind when you're creating graphics, anything that has a ton of text is probably not going to get a lot of engagement. Um, video is, is really, really important. Uh, I, I really can't stress enough how important video is, is becoming and how important it's going to be. Um, Instagram themselves said, we are no longer an image sharing platform, we're a video sharing platform. You saw TikTok explode. I mean, video content on socials is, is, is the future. Um, so keeping that in mind when you're creating content, and it can be intimidating as a young founder or startup owner, you might not have access to the tools to be shooting professional video content. You might not have advanced editing skills in video, uh, but the good news is that even a two second animated graphic is considered a video. It's recognized by the algorithm as video. So you don't have to be creating um, super advanced long form video content. It can be something really simple. It can be something as simple as adding animation to a text um, or adding an animated graphic to a still image. And then that is classified as video. You're saving it as an MP4. You're uploading it to a platform as such. It's recognized as video. So there's opportunity to take advantage of those types of things as well to create more animated and video focused content. Uh, another thing that I always like to mention is story content. So, you know, there's stories are popping up everywhere across a, a variety of different social platforms. Almost all of the major players on social have stories now, Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, Snapchat, they all have story functionality. And I think it's only going to continue to grow. So stories are unique in that you have the user's full and undivided attention for those few seconds. It takes up the full screen. So there's nothing else on the phone screen or on the, on the desktop computer that's distracting the user from that story content. So that makes it really, really engaging. And you have a unique opportunity here to get in front of your user and to make something that's really engaging and to sell your message. Um, so making sure that you have story creative that's created for stories. Um, and Canva has a bunch of templates for this still image. Uh, they have some video templates for stories, all of which you can customize to, to suit your own needs. Um, another thing that I mention is square images. So it's images that have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio that are cropped to perfect square. When in doubt, when you're trying to strategize on how, what type or size of image to create for your social channels, uh, when in doubt, create something square uh, because that's pretty universal across channels. You can use a square graphic and it takes up the most screen area. So you think in terms of what type of image is going to take up the most space on the screen, a square where it takes up more screen area than a rectangular image. Um, so when in doubt design for square, uh, they will almost always perform better than a rectangular crop uh, when you're creating a post for feed um, or anything like that across channels. So when in doubt, I usually just, I usually just create graphics that are perfect square and it's, it's really easy to adopt those across channels and it's pretty much universal. 
So next, I, I want to walk you through some Canva tips and tricks, uh, some design tips for using the platform. I'll walk you through some of the features so you can become more familiar. Uh, but first, I'll show you the home page of Canva. So, you know, this you're kind of presented with this interface. You can create a Canva account. It's totally free for you to sign up. So it's really easy, really user friendly. You'll go to this home page and you can search here at the top for different designs or different templates. Uh, if you're looking for something specific, if you want it to align with a specific theme, or if you have specific content that you know you want to create, maybe around holiday time, looking for something that's holiday themed, um, you're, you're advertising a sale, uh, or you're encouraging followers, you're celebrating a, hitting a milestone and follower count, you can search for any type of template that you can possibly imagine. Um, or down at the bottom, if you know what size or what type of post you want to be creating, uh, there are pre-populated templates, um, blank templates with the appropriate size for each of these placements. So an Instagram post will be automatically, it'll present you with a blank template that's cropped to square. Um, poster will be eight and a half by 11. Um, Facebook ad will be rectangular. Uh, it'll be like a 1.91 to one aspect ratio. Um, and, and a Facebook post will be slightly more rectangular than square. Um, so th this gives you a sense of the optimal ratio um, and it'll present you with a blank template that you can then customize to whatever you want it to say. You can add text, you can add um, elements, you can add images, et cetera. Um, so the different functionalities in Canva, there's there's a bunch of templates for you to choose from. As I mentioned, uh, you can search the templates and create a graphic that aligns with a certain theme. Uh, you can upload your own images. If you have images you want to use in the design, you can upload. Um, or Canva has a whole bank of stock photography that you can use that's just generic imagery. If you don't really have anything you want to upload or you don't have anything branded that you want to use that's your own, you can um, choose from a bank of, of stock photography that Canva allows you to use free of charge. It's not licensed. Um, you can also add custom shapes like rectangles, circles, um, thought bubbles, things like that. Uh, frames will allow you to insert an image in a certain shape. So if you want to insert an image over another image that's a circle or a square, um, there's a bunch of different frames to choose from. You can add text boxes. Uh, you can also add music. Um, one really nice thing about Canva is they have a bunch of, you know, it's not necessarily your typical music that you'd find on like Apple Music. It's just stock music, background noise. You can add um, if you want it to um, overlay over an image with other sound. If you don't want to use that sound, you can add music into the background. Um, or you can just add music to any other animation that doesn't have sound. Um, they also have stock video. So similar to stock imagery, uh, stock video on Canva is is really, really helpful if you don't have any videos that you want to use. It's just generic video animations that you can upload to your design. Um, and then you can also customize like background colors and textures and patterns and things like that. So there's a lot of functionality here. It's really user friendly. I'll dive a little bit deeper into each one. Um, so templates, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different templates you can search. Um, some examples here, you can see there's some with image image focus, there's some that's text focus, there's some, some with animation, so they'll have animated elements already pre-populated. So you can use any of these. And what's nice is that you're not necessarily tied to any of these colors, you're not tied to any of the elements. You can delete, you can change colors, you can resize text, you can add text boxes. Um, it's super customizable and user-friendly. Um, the photos here, you can see examples of some of the stock photos that you can use. So, um, you know, it's just generic images. It's not going to be anything super focused or, or branded even, but it, it's helpful in a pinch um, if you don't have any photography you want to use. Um, elements here, so there's you can add different lines if you want to add like lines to emphasize things, or if you want to add a dotted line. Um, shapes, you can add any any number of shapes to put behind text in an image. Uh, frames, I mentioned you can upload an image and it'll automatically pre-fill to this frame. Um, and you can use this to layer images on top of each other as well. 
There's fun stickers that you can add. Um, charts are a little bit more complex, but you know, if you're trying to create an infographic or something like that, or even for a presentation, charts are helpful. You can create any variety of different charts with numbers that you input, um, and you can populate into Excel, which will then transfer into Canva. Um, text, text box is pretty self-explanatory. One cool thing about the text is that there are also font combinations in Canva and these font combinations are totally customizable. So you see the font combos here, they already have a certain effect added. You can change the text to say whatever you want it to be. And you can also change the colors. So that's another really cool way to add some like graphic elements to any design, um, some text that's a little bit bolder, a little bit more flashy, uh, and you can totally customize those to say whatever you want. Um, music, as I mentioned, so not seeing anything like pop, pop culture music here, anything licensed, but just general background noise. Um, you can upload to your design. You can trim these to any length, so it can be shorter um, if you only want to use a small portion of it. Uh, but there's pre-populated music there if you ever need to use it. Um, stock videos, again, similar to the stock imagery. Um, just some generic graphic animation that you can add to your designs if you want to add some motion. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to mention, which I think is particularly beneficial to young entrepreneurs, you're making probably making a lot of an, or yeah, a lot of slide decks and templates and things like that. Um, and PowerPoint can be a little boring, can get a little tired. So there's also a bunch of slides template, templates in Canva that you can use. And some of them even have animation, which is cool. Uh, there are some motion graphics and things like that you can incorporate into your slide deck. So you can see some examples of the different uh, templates that they have for slides presentations here. Um, there, a lot of them are really advanced and really really cool and fully customizable, again, just like all of their templates. So uh, it's a really useful tool for creating pitch decks or slide decks or any presentation that you need to use. Um, and, and each of the templates you can click and it'll expand. As you can see here on the right, it expands and shows you all of the different slide templates within that template package. Um, and you can pick and choose which pages you'd like to apply or which pages you'd like to use, um, or you can click apply all and it'll apply, it'll create a presentation for you with all of those individual slides. So um, this is a really helpful tool for creating presentations if you want something that's a little bit more flashy um, and a little bit more catchy than like a traditional PowerPoint design. Um, getting into some of the additional external features of Canva, uh, one thing that I love is the Canva color palette generator. So, uh, you know, it, it's important when you're creating or designing graphics for social to have, you know, graphics that are on brand and that showcase your brand colors. So you can upload an image to this Canva color palette generator and it will generate a color palette for you. So you can upload a flyer, an informational brochure, you can update your, upload your logo um, and it'll generate a color palette for you. And then all you have to do is copy and paste the color codes back into Canva and use those, you can use those in your design. So it's really helpful for creating graphics that are that are on brand, that, that have your brand colors. Um, and, and it's a great tool. I use this very often with clients because if we're trying to create a graphic, it, it has to be in line with their brand color. If it's even slightly off, it'll look off. It'll throw off the look and feel of the entire feed. Um, so this is a great tool. You can you can Google Canva Color Palette Generator or you can go, it's canva.com slash colors slash color palette generator. Um, another really cool tool that I like to use is Image Color Picker. This one is just, you know, you don't have to use this one in particular. I just happen to use this one very often. You can find it at imagecolorpicker.com. So this is, you can upload an image and then select a specific portion of that image that you wanna pull color from. So for here, for instance, uploaded this image with a truck. I want the color of the sky for some text in my Canva design. So you can actually hover over the portion of the image that you want to pull the color from, click it, and then on the left in that black box there, it'll give you the color code, the HTML hex code for the color, which you can paste into Canva 
and using your design. So this is really helpful if you're trying to match a specific color and you want it to match exactly, um, you can use this tool to uh, make your design look really seamless and kind of take it to the next level rather than taking a shot in the dark and trying to match the color on your own. Uh, another thing with, with regards to typography, uh, Canva actually has a font guide. Uh, you can explore different fonts and different font combinations. A lot of times in designs, uh, you're using more than one font, but you want to use two fonts that go together. This will go through different ideas for font combinations, and it'll even show you templates that use those font combinations, which you can click use this template and it'll pre-populate into Canva for you, and then you can customize it on your own. Um, this is just a really great tool for exploring different fonts. It tells you even a little bit more about the fonts and what they convey, um, and you can you can see examples of them used in designs and decide, you know, what best suits you and your business. So this one's canva.com slash learn slash Canva for work brand fonts. Again, you can Google Canva font guide and probably find it, um, but it's a really nice tool um, if you're thinking in terms of typography for your design. Uh, and last but not least, you know, thinking in terms of startups, young entrepreneurs, some of you may have logos for your businesses, some may still be thinking about how to create a logo or what you want your logo to look like. Uh, Canva has a logo design center, which is really helpful. Uh, you can create your own logo from scratch, uh, start with a blank logo template uh, and use their elements and their text uh, effects and designs to create your own logo, or you can use a template and customize it to your business. So um, it's really, really helpful as a starting point if you're kind of looking to get to create a logo for your business uh, and, and kind of experiment, but don't know where to begin. Um, it's a really great place to start, really user-friendly and fully customizable. And you can use your logo and other Canva designs, or you can download it and then use it elsewhere. So it's really transferable to, to other places. Um, and that's how it's right within the Canva desktop app, app. So once you create your Canva account, that feature would be available to you. Uh, next, I just wanted to show some examples of work in action. Uh, graphics that I've created in Canva that we've used in advertising campaigns for clients. Um, so here, these are just some examples of image ads that we created in Canva. So here, the first the first ad here, just adding an overlay of text with a shadow behind, um, inspired fitness across the different carousel cards, something really simple, really easy, easy to create in Canva, but effective. Um, this middle image was just a stock uh, image that we found in Canva, um, and we overlaid the product PNG image over top. Uh, it, it was a vitamin C serum, so emphasizing you know natural, clean ingredients. And then over here on the right, um, just added a little bit of text to, to showcase the, the sale that this particular client was having. Um, so it's really, really simple and really easy and user-friendly to create designs like these that look professional, um, but were actually just created in Canva. Um, just some different video ads here. So um, let me see if it'll let me click out. Just to show you an example of a different uh, video ad that we can create in Canva. This is just a simple slideshow that um, we created with with different images of a of a handbag for a luxury handbag company. So really simple. Just added different images to to Canva as a slideshow um, and, and set the time in to like two seconds each and then downloaded it as a video and uploaded it to Facebook Ads Manager. Um, you know, it, it, it it's, wasn't complicated to create, but looks professional. Um, this middle video here, I don't necessarily need to walk through and show you each individual one, but this one is just a, a stock video of a woman smiling. Um, advertising this retinol serum for one particular client who had a new skincare line that they wanted to promote. Um, and then on the right uh, was just another slideshow similar to the first one that I showed you, um, showcasing different room scenes uh, for a client who was advertising window treatments. So it's really simple whether using slideshows, you can add timings and create a video 
um, or you can use stock video to create something animated. Uh, but again, all of this was done in Canva. And then these are some story ads, which I mentioned again, having vertical um, graphics, particular two stories is great. This first one was just a video of people working out for a fitness center that we advertised for. We added some text on top uh, with regards to um, COVID precautions that they were taking when the gym reopens. Uh, this middle one here, just a still vertical image, but um, added some, some text at the bottom here about their vitamin C serum. And then on the right here, again, another still image, but a story graphic. Um, and I, I did use the image color picker tool that we talked about to match the color of the text to the color of the chair so that everything looked really clean and uniform. Um, so to give you some ideas or some examples of Canva and action and real work, these are all real ads that were, that were run for real clients. And these were all things that I workshopped in Canva. So I, I just want to end things with talking about some supplemental tools that would be helpful and beneficial for you that are also totally free to download and use. So Canva is a big one, but there are a bunch of other tools out there that you can use to create graphics. Um, Capwing is great. Uh, it's totally free. And the best thing with Capwing is you can add text to videos or text overlay to videos. Um, you can create a slideshow with multiple videos or multiple images. There's different effects that you can add. Um, it's a little bit more advanced than Canva in terms of video editing capabilities. So um, something to keep in mind if you're looking for something that's a little bit more advanced than what you can do in Canva. Capoing is a great tool. Mojo um, is, a, is an app for your phone that's free um, and, and it has tons of story templates. So you can create still or animated stories from scratch or you can use one of their hundreds of templates uh, to create really engaging story content for, for your social channel. Um, Canva Stories is another great one. This is great for using or for creating uh, image collages. So you can upload, you know, they have layouts. You can see here at the top, they have layouts that you can add multiple images to. Uh, so really user-friendly. They also have different templates that you can upload images to. This is another great app for your phone. Um, Boomerang, I'm sure you're familiar with Boomerang from Instagram. Uh, you can actually use and create Boomerangs directly from the Instagram app, but they have their own app as well um, that you can use to create short form video. So again, I mentioned that video is really important for social. Uh, Boomerang is a great tool for creating some short form, um, quick, easy, snippy video content for your social channel. Um, and, and it, you know, it, it, you, you, can, you can shoot from your iPhone. It can be something that's really off the cuff, uh, but Boomerang is a great tool for that. Type loop is cool that, in that it animates text. So it actually um, allows you to add animation to text and you can overlay that on top of any image. And you can also customize the fonts, the colors, and there's a bunch of other customization options. But it's another, kind, it's another way to kind of bootstrap some video creative for your social channels um, is by adding animated text. So Type Loop is a great app for that. Um, and Plotograph. Uh, is a really cool one. You can actually add motion to still images. So you can select portions of your image that you want to appear, you want to appear like they're moving um, and you can edit your images and make it look like they're animated or have motion. So, you know, you, you can take an image of a wave and make it look like the water is moving um, or something like that. So Plotograph is another app for your phone that you can download and you can experiment with different um, image animations there. So all in all, um, you know, that's, that's really all I have for today's presentation. I think if there's anything that you take away from it, it's just to keep experimenting with different types of content. Social media is all about experimentation, finding what works, um, not being afraid to kind of push the envelope in terms of design and creating some, some different graphics and different designs for your social channels that that you're, you might not necessarily know will perform well, but it's about experimenting, uh, uh, putting it out there and seeing what your audience engages with. Um, and then just keep repeatedly testing those different types of content, different types of graphics, image, story, video, um, 
see what see what performs for you. Learn from your metrics, learn from your engagement metrics, and then just repeat over and over and over and over and over again until you hone in on a strategy that works for you. Um, I guess now I'll open up the floor to any questions, anything related to social media, design, anything in this presentation or not. Um, totally open to uh, answering any questions you have. Okay, well, I actually do have a question um, regarding color schemes and posting um, on social media. So um, is there a way we integrate color theory into posting? Like what are good colors to pick and do they differ industry wise? Or is it like whatever goes, goes? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I feel like it depends on, you know, every, it, it, there's there's a whole psychology behind color and color picking, right? Uh, and I think that it kind of starts with what colors you believe at most emulate, most closely emulate your brand story uh, and the message that you want to deliver. So, you know, the color yellow usually conveys themes of like happiness, positivity, optimism. Um, the color blue tends to create, tends to convey maybe more thoughtfulness or um, maybe something, something deeper, more intellectual. So I think it, it stems from deciding how you want to present your brand and deciding what your brand color should be. And then, you know, when you're creating designs, creating designs that, that utilize colors in that color family. Um, of course, you can, you can branch out. One, one thing that I always caution against is using the same exact color in every single post and using the same exact text uh, and every single post using the same fonts over and over again because it, it gets redundant and then you're, all of a sudden your content isn't creative. So certainly branch out a bit with, with colors and, and the colors that you're choosing in your designs. Um, but start to think about what colors are in the color family and what colors complement those colors. And the, the Canva color palette generator that I talked about uh, will help you with, with kind of putting together a palette or guide you in the direction towards putting together a palette or a color palette that you can use in your design. Great, thank you so much. Um, was anyone ever surprised to know that you use Canva? Like, I feel like I didn't know that like Canva was so accessible to create such like premium content for both like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's funny because it is surprising that you can create things that are so high level and professional that we're using for clients and, and real ad campaigns uh, with Canva. But, um, you know, most of the time, to be honest, clients don't necessarily question it as long as, as long as the graphic is fit to their specifications. And as long as we're using, you know, colors that are relevant to their brand and we're using the correct typography and we're following the brand guidelines, they don't necessarily, um, care how, how we create the graphics. Um, yeah, it is, it is surprising that we can use Canva in such a capacity um, and that it's so versatile, but um, I think I'm, I'm grateful for it because I, I use it all the time um, and, and I've gotten to be somewhat of a pro with it because I use it so often and clients are almost always really, really happy with the graphics that we create. We almost never have to go into uh, Photoshop or an InDesign or anything like that. Uh, we can mostly rely on Canva to create things and that allows us to turn things around a lot more quickly uh, than we typically would had we need to go through a graphics team or something like that who's using really advanced software. Great. And um, is there a specific way to know what works with your uh, targeted audience? Like other than, I know like you sort of have to experiment to figure out what they want, but is there something that you initially think about before actually posting um, to sort of understand what your customers are looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know what your users are going to engage with when you're creating content, but uh, the number one thing that I say when I give advice to people asking me about social media is 
put yourself in the shoes of your end user, put yourself in the shoes of your target market, put yourself in the shoes of your audience and think what content would I engage with? So, you know, kind of flip the switch a bit and think about, think about it from a consumer perspective. Like, okay, I'm scrolling through Instagram. What am I going to stop and read? What am I going to stop and click? What am I going to stop and engage with? What am I going to give a like? Uh, so thinking in terms of that, I think it's really easy when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a business owner, when you're a founder to get really salesy with, with your social content and to think of, okay, how am I going to sell my business to my end user? Um, and that's not really what social media is about. Social media is about building a relationship, providing value, providing information to the end user. It's not necessarily about selling, especially not on organic social media. We're not, we're not advertising. Um, so, so keeping that in mind when you're creating your social content, you're not you're not selling, you're trying to provide value and you're trying to share information. Um, and then outside of that, okay, what information, if I was a consumer of this business um, or if I was in the target market, like what information would I want to know? What information would I want to be shared with me? What things would I find helpful um, from this brand? What types of content would I want them to create on social? So, um, Thinking of it in that way, I think it's helpful and that'll help guide your strategy a little bit more in terms of uh, what types of content that you are creating. And then of course, after that, the engagement metrics will speak for themselves. You know, um, you might see a post and, and you get two likes on it and you might see a post and you get 50 likes on it. So deep diving into why that is. Okay, what kind of posts um, got 50 likes, what was unique about it? What kind of posts got two likes? What, what was unique about that one? Um, what are my top liked posts and what do those have in common? Um, what times of day did I post those things? Time of day does make an impact as well. Um, morning, afternoon, evening, am I experimenting with different times of day for posting and seeing you know, what, what performs best? Um, there are actually metrics that you can look at on your Instagram profile, user analytics, you can see when, you're, when your followers are most active and kind of optimize your posting times accordingly. So there's so many factors that impact social media posts and their performance, but um, I think if you frame it from that perspective, think about providing value to the consumer, paying attention to your engagement metrics. Um, and your posting times, that'll help kind of guide your strategy and you can optimize over time. Awesome. Does anyone else have any questions they'd like to ask Taylor? Okay, if that's it, thank you so much, Taylor. This was an amazing presentation. We really learned more about social media and how easy it is to actually create content. Um, especially with like more accessible tools that also are free. I feel like right now, a lot of these tools are always, you need to pay for them. So this was great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, totally open to, if anyone thinks of any questions after the fact, my email is here for you. So, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me there as well. Awesome. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone.